Did they die instantly, or was it a long and slow agony? What happens to the human body during an underwater implosion? It's 8 o'clock in the morning when about 740 kilometers from the coast of the Canadian island of Newfoundland, the submersible Titan plunges into the waters of the North Atlantic Ocean to observe the wreck of the Titanic lying on the ocean floor at a depth of 38-10 meters. A tourist expedition to closely observe the remains of the well-known British liner, which sank on the night between 14 and 15 April 1912 following a collision with an iceberg, killing over 1,500 people. Five wealthy men on board, including the British billionaire Hamish Harding, the French explorer Paul Henry Nargillet, considered one of the world's leading experts on the Titanic, the Pakistani businessman, Shahzada Dawood, with his son Suleiman, and finally Stockton Rush, pilot of the submersible Titan, as well as CEO and founder of Ocean Gate, American tour company that owns the Titan. A journey into the abyss costing $250,000 per person, a unique experience reserved for rich people, ready to risk their lives and challenge the Titanic's curse. A small submersible built in carbon fiber and titanium, capable of accommodating up to five people, including the pilot, and guaranteeing the sufficient oxygen reserve for 96 hours. It is approximately 6 meters and 70 long, 2 meters and 80 wide, and 2 meters and 50 high. With a weight of about 10 tons, it is able to reach 4,000 meters of depth. On June 18, 2023, however, something does not go as it should. One hour and 45 minutes after the dive of the Titan, that is when it had almost reached the wreck, the communications between the submersible and the Polar Prince suddenly stopped, Canadian flagship from which the Titan was launched. Thus begins a real race against time to search for the submersible lost in the depths of the ocean and bring it back to the surface in the hope of saving the five passengers. A research area of 26,000 square kilometers, which required an enormous mobilization of numerous means from different countries, including planes, drones, submarines, underwater robots, ships, and highly advanced research systems. Four days of research for six and a half million dollars, which ended in the worst possible way. On June 22, at a press conference in Boston, the United States Coast Guard says that the robot used to search for the Titan has found five wreckage of the submersible about 500 meters from the bow of the Titanic. A catastrophic implosion of the Titan's pressure chamber resulting in the deaths of all five passengers. On the internet, we can find numerous articles and videos explaining what happened to the Titan from a technical point of view. It is also inevitable to wonder what happened to the five passengers of the submersible. Did they die instantly, or was it a long and slow agony? What happens to the human body during an underwater implosion? Let's try to answer this question. Two theories have been advanced about the death of the five passengers. First theory, lack of oxygen. As the amount of oxygen available in the submersible decreases, the human body begins to suffer. Hypoxemia occurs, which is a pathological condition in which the oxygen levels in the arterial blood decrease. The cause is alveolar hypoventilation, a disorder in which the gaseous exchanges that take place in the lungs, in particular between the blood present in the capillaries and the air contained in the pulmonary alveoli, are reduced, or even worse, impossible. This increases the concentration of non-oxygenated hemoglobin in the blood, so the skin and mucous membranes will begin to take on a bluish-purple color. At the same time, the levels of carbon dioxide in the blood increase, major waste product of cellular metabolic processes. In this case, we speak of hypercapnia, and the subject enters into hyperventilation. It is difficult to breathe, and there is what is called dyspnea, or air hunger. The body enters a state of generalized hypoxia, a clinical condition in which oxygen deficiency affects the tissues of the entire body. The first to be affected are the nervous tissues, in particular the brain, the visual and auditory systems. The human body thus enters a state of alert and begins to increase heart rate and respiratory rate in order to try to ensure greater oxygenation of the tissues. 
Confusion, seizures, and loss of consciousness are all possible consequences. Once the 96 hours are over, and therefore the amount of oxygen in the submersible is completely finished, the passengers develop anoxia, where unlike hypoxia, there is a complete lack of oxygen. In just three to four minutes, all organs are irreversibly damaged, such as the brain, heart, and lungs, and death occurs within five to seven minutes of complete impediment of breathing. Second theory. Underwater implosion. According to experts, the Titan submersible was subjected to a pressure of almost 400 kilograms for each square centimeter, a value hundreds of times higher than the pressure normally recorded on the surface. During the implosion, the walls of the submersible were subjected to a greater external pressure than the internal one, for which they suddenly gave way, and the result was a collapse of the submersible, a crushing on itself. Imagine taking a can and crushing it with your foot. This is the effect of the implosion that killed the people on board the submersible. For better understanding, watch this video. Here you can see the effect of imploding a steel tank at a pressure of one atmosphere. The Titan would have imploded at a depth of about 3,500 meters, where the pressure is at least 350 atmospheres, therefore 350 times higher than what can be seen in the video. Did the five passengers notice the implosion? Did they feel pain or sensed that they were about to die? To answer these questions, we must first consider two very important parameters. The first is that according to a study conducted by a group of neuroscientists at MIT in Boston, it takes only 13 milliseconds for the human brain to identify an entire image. The second instead is the response time, that is the time that elapses between the moment in which the nervous system is subjected to a stimulus and the moment in which the human body responds to this stimulus, following the elaboration of the information from the brain. In humans, this response time to visual stimuli is typically between 150 and 300 milliseconds. According to Aileen Maria Marty, a former naval officer and professor at Florida International University, a catastrophic implosion is incredibly rapid, occurring in a fraction of a millisecond at the incredible speed of 800 kilometers per hour. It is therefore such a short time that it did not allow the brain of the passengers of the Titan to process the information and consequently to perceive pain or to realize that they were about to die. The entire structure of the submersible would therefore have collapsed before the individuals inside could realize that there was a problem, even if according to the first reconstructions the passengers would perhaps have noticed that the hull was about to give way during the descent. According to this theory, the creaks of the hull of the submersible, a moment before the implosion, would have anticipated to the passengers that their end was imminent. Among the many ways in which one can die, this would still seem painless. In a fraction of a millisecond, organs are crushed, bones shattered, and the extreme pressure difference rapidly heats the air inside the submersible, causing passengers to incinerate and die instantly. The violence of the implosion therefore makes the hypothesis of recovering the bodies of the victims implausible. Despite this, research will continue, also with the aim of identifying other remains of the submersible and collecting further elements to clarify what really happened in the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. This dramatic story with a tragic epilogue opens up several questions about the actual safety of the Titan, the poor materials with which the submersible appears to have been built, and the lack of certification checks. The submersible disaster has divided public opinion in two, between those who join in the pain for the loss of five human lives and those who consider it a normal consequence of the risk that the passengers of the Titan have consciously chosen to run. There is also controversy over the enormous mobilization of men and equipment that this desperate race against time required, which cost over six million dollars, and over the difference that the law of the sea makes between rich and poor, between billionaires looking for adventures and strong emotions, and migrants looking for a new land. And how do you think about it? Let me know below in the comments.